Well, good morning, everybody, and certainly uh, welcome. On behalf of the Bank of America, Combined Jewish Philanthropies, Homestart, Father Bills, and Mainspring, and the United Way of Massachusetts Bay and Merrimack Valley, I'd really like to thank everybody for joining us today for this exciting announcement here in the great city of Brockton. My name is David Pedrazzo. I am the consumer banking market leader here uh, at the Bank of America, and I am fortunate enough to um, have uh, three banking centers uh, in the local area here in Brockton. I'll keep my remarks brief uh, this morning, but I really do want to emphasize just how proud and honored the Bank of America is to be standing alongside of our partners in the Renew Collaborative uh, Initiative. When Matt Pritchard at Homestart first shared this new and innovative concept with us as a tremendous step forward in uh, ending homelessness in the greater Boston and now the South Shore area, we immediately knew it was something that we absolutely had to be part of. Because really to embark on a path to economic mobility and ultimately self-sufficient, uh, our Massachusetts families need to ensure that their basic needs are being met. This includes having a solid roof over their head um, for, uh, and the secure knowledge that uh, they will have a home for their families, not only for today, but tomorrow and the long term. Homelessness in our Commonwealth is clearly a prevalent issue that requires the dedication and collaboration of multiple stakeholders to address. And partnerships among us uh, all, uh, as all of us standing here before you today in the Renew Collaborative, um, are true embodiments of how when the private, public, as well as the nonprofit sectors band together, we truly have the power to evoke and to sustain real positive change. I now have the distinct pleasure of introducing Mayor Bill Carpenter, who I'd like to thank for serving as our generous host this morning in Brockton. Since taking office, Mayor Carpenter has shown his concern for the issue of homelessness in the community and has provided leadership to identify key and lasting solutions. Recently, Mayor Carpenter supported the development of Father Bills and Main Spring's new 23-unit permanent supportive housing project for homeless individuals on Main Street and is collaborating with them currently on another six-unit project on Warren Avenue. And it's funny because I was conferring with some of you uh, before uh, the event started. Uh, I was there with my colleague Sue um, two weeks ago, and uh, it is quite an impressive unit. Uh, and I can tell you, and Sue can attribute to this, uh, we spread four uh, yards of mulch, and the uh, absolute aesthetics of that is impeccable. So I guarantee that it, it looks great. So uh, thank you, Mayor Carpenter, for having us all today as we celebrate the launch of a proven model that will prevent homelessness in Brockton and the entire region. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. So I think my primary job is to welcome you, but I'm really gonna use the opportunity to say thank you uh, because I am so grateful for what the Renew Collaborative is going to bring to Brockton and the greater Brockton area uh, as a, a key strategy to helping us reduce and hopefully someday eliminate homelessness here in our city and our area. Um, I, I wanna specifically mention the partners, Bank of America, the Combined Jewish Philanthropies, Homestart, the United Way, and Father Bills in Mainspring. And, uh, you know, as was mentioned, one of the exciting things about this initiative is the combining of private, public, and nonprofit agencies that are all able to pull together to put together a successful strategy and with everyone running in their lane and contributing to the overall success of the program. So for these agencies to bring the initiative to Brockton, a proven model where they've already shown the success in Boston and to now expand to the South Shore and to Brockton uh, is great news for us. You know, the six unit uh, project was mentioned, I'll just mention that very briefly because I think one of the things I've learned in almost six years is there's very rarely one solution to a problem. Most problems are a lot more complex than people like to think they are, and there's never really easy, one easy answer to fix something. And 
you know, if I think about the biggest challenges that we took on six years ago and the biggest challenges that we're still facing today, um, homelessness and chronic homelessness is right near the top of that list. Uh, we've made some good progress, we've done some good things, uh, but I'll be the first to say that we have a lot more work to do and bringing the Renew Initiative in is, is, is going to be key. So the six unit project is something that by my being able to use federal home funds, the city has committed about a half a million dollars uh, to uh, a project, a building that will hold, is it six or eight? Six. That will house six people. Permanent housing for people transitioning out of homelessness with wraparound services provided on site. It's a model that I've had the opportunity through Father Bills to see some other programs that they were involved in up in Quincy. I've seen others. It's a model that can have success. There are folks that are chronically homeless that given just the right place with the right services at the right price can keep a permanent roof over their head. And so if someone would say to me, why are you putting half a million into a project that's only gonna house six people? Because this is a pilot project. We're doing this so that I can convince uh, not just the residents of the city, but, but all of our partners that this model works and we've got the people and the agencies here in the city of Brockton to replicate that model on a larger scale. So we're, we're really excited about that initiative. And I think our state legislative delegation is tied up in Boston this morning, but I was gonna also mention them. Uh, it wasn't too long ago that the Tenants Preservation Program over at the Brockton Housing Court was being discontinued. And that would have been a tremendous blow uh, to the people who need it the most here in the city. And we were able to lobby with the help of our legislative delegation to have that decision reversed and to keep that program here in the city. So no one easy answer, but tenant preservation, building roofs over people's heads, uh, providing services, and particularly, and I don't want to talk too much about their, their initiative, but through our efforts, to reduce, again, partners with Father Bills, through our efforts to reduce and someday eliminate veterans' homelessness here in the city, um, one of our key strategies is that the city hired an outreach coordinator, a veterans' outreach coordinator, who doesn't wait for people to come in and ask for help, goes out and finds veterans who are struggling and are probably well on their way to an eviction but they still have a roof over their heads. And this coordinator works with them as a case manager, connects them to services, and th the concept is, let's keep the roof over the head that the, that the veteran has right now by getting the services to them instead of waiting for them to become homeless. And so when I read and hear about the Renew Initiative, uh, I know that on a larger scale, uh, it's, the, it's the same model of the best way to eliminate and reduce homelessness is to prevent it in the first place. And that's what the Renew Initiative will do for the folks uh, that they're able to assist. So thank you. Thank you to all the agencies that have brought the initiative here to the city of Brockton. Thank you, Mayor Carpenter, the city of Brockton and to all of you for being part of this today. My name's Mark Baker, I'm the president and CEO of Combined Jewish Philanthropies, and I can't tell you how proud I am to be standing here today representing the 300,000 members of Greater Boston's Jewish community. For 126 years, CJP has been committed to taking care of the vulnerable members of our community and of our broader world. It's part of who we are as a people. In fact, if you look at the way that the Hebrew Bible phrases the commandment to take care of those in need, it's actually incredibly powerful. It doesn't just say, give to those in need. It says, when you see a person who falls on hard times, when you see a need, do not look away. 
the obligation to give, the obligation to help, the obligation to solve the world's problems begins with seeing the humanity of the person right in front of us and not looking away. Homelessness is an issue that affects us here and beyond, and it's an issue from which we cannot look away. Addressing the eviction crisis is one of the most important ways that we can work to keep communities and individuals whole. And for us, it's a moral and spiritual imperative. But it's not just enough to help the person right in front of us, because to repair the world, to pursue justice, means we have to pursue systemic change. It means closing the gap between the way the world is today and the way the world ought to be. Now, homelessness isn't exclusive to any one city or town. No one is immune to it. One bad break, a health crisis, sudden joblessness, a natural disaster, any of these could lead to eviction. So what better way to help close the gap than addressing these issues before they arise? And that's why Homestart is such a powerful program. When you keep families in their homes, you proactively address so many of the issues that would arise if they had no place to live. This truly is systemic change. It is a win, win, win for families, for landlords, and for our communities. CJP and our Jewish community feel called to this work. Because in the Jewish tradition, it's not enough for us to only take care of our own. We feel called to be a community that is engaged with our broader society and with the world, bringing our values to bear on the problems and challenges that all of us face, and working for the dignity and well-being of every human being. And that's why it was so important to me, to our board, to all of my colleagues at CJP to be at the table, working alongside Bank of America and United Way to support innovative solutions to homelessness and eviction prevention is really an extraordinary place to start. The partnerships that Homestart has brought together are an example of what we can do when we work together to close this gap. It truly is a collaborative effort, as we just heard, to bring together the private sector, local government, nonprofits, and faith communities at a time when it feels like the challenges are getting bigger and the silos are getting stronger. None of us can or should do this alone. But when we work together, city and town officials, faith communities, agencies, nonprofits, landlords, and others, when we work together, we can take the first step toward making sure that everyone in our communities has a safe, stable, and secure place to call home. Our Jewish community is proud to be here with you today. Thank you to our partners, to Homestart, to United Way of Mass Bay, to Father Bills and Mainspring, and to Bank of America. We're honored to be in this partnership with all of you. May this be just the beginning. Thanks. Good morning, folks. My name is Robert Jenkins. I'd like to welcome you all to the great city of Brockton. Uh, that's going to be our moniker now, Mayor, the great city of Brockton. Um, we have a couple of speakers I'd like to go through to see, but I also noticed Councilor Nicastro. How are you? Excellent. That's our city councilor, uh, Ward 3? Four. Four, 5. Thank you. Four. Four. Ward 4. She's taking over Ward 5. And and Ann Bolagard, thank you, city councilor. We have some wonderful leaders here in the city of Brockton, um, starting with the mayor. Uh, he's made a commitment when he came on six years ago, Mayor, that he was gonna, we were going to deal with the issue of homelessness one way or the other. I know he's had conversations with John, who I'll introduce earlier on, but we've also been down to several places, D.C. in particular, to know that homelessness is not just a Brockton issue, it's a national issue. And the fact that our leaders are stepping up, stepping forward to actually address the issue and not hiding from it. Because I can tell you now, a lot of communities do. They just kind of want to shy away, just make, pretend that it's not an issue, that it's not there. But it is an issue. And if this city, the great city of Brockton, 
want to continue our development, we have to deal with this issue, and that's what we're going to do. At this point in time, I'd like to introduce one of our speakers. We have three speakers. If you folks want to come up front and take a seat, that'd be great, because this is going to take, if, if you haven't noticed, and my staff will tell you, I do talk for a long time. So if you want to come up forward, because I know it's warm in here, um, my first speaker is going to be John Wazinski. John and I have had a long history. John, they gave me something to read about you, but I don't know if I just want to read this or just tell them what I think of you. John is a leader. John is a leader. John has been with Mainstream, Father Bill's Mainstream, for over the past decade. John has grown with the agency to provide homeless prevention, emergency services, as well as over 500 units of permanent supportive housing for the homeless individuals and families and veterans in the region. One thing about region, I know everybody says this, the South Coastal region, but if you haven't noticed, we don't have any water over here in Brockton. So we kind of look at ourselves as Southeastern Massachusetts, all right? Uh, he has also developed a five-year strategic plan focused on the new housing development, strengthening community relations, creating new programs models for the, to help families and building a new housing resource center model to shift away from the traditional emergency shelter model. As we know, the state has moved away from the emergency shelters. This is one of the discussions John and I have had, the mayor and I have had in our planning department. We've all talked about this, moving away from the shelter model and homeless more rapidly for the most vulnerable members of our community. John, I have a couple of questions for you. Um, if you could tell us, are you seeing in the South Shore, Southeastern Massachusetts in terms of housing, what the populations have the biggest challenges in maintaining stable housing in this market? And the uh, second part of that question is, how did, how did Father Bills get involved? You can fill us in, John. Thanks, Robert. You know, the recent out of reach report from the National Low Income Housing Coalition shows that Massachusetts is the third most expensive state to rent. Mass renters need to earn close to $34 per hour to afford a two bedroom apartment, which is almost three times the minimum wage. In our region, the current fair market rent is about $1,500 for a two bedroom in Brockton and about $2,200 in Quincy and Plymouth. The individuals and families we serve have incomes that cannot keep pace with the increases in rent. As the market tightens and becomes more competitive, we are working with more and more households that even have rental assistance subsidies and cannot find still apartments to rent. That's why it's even more important right now to prevent homelessness whenever possible. The Renew Collaborative builds off of already the homeless prevention work we've managed through our tenancy preservation program in the courts and also a state funded program called the Strategic Prevention Initiative which is funded by the Department of Housing and Community Development to really assist families that may end up in emergency shelters. Over last year, we prevented 366 families that used to go into the state's emergency shelter system never had to. And it costs over $40,000 a year to all of us um, to shelter a family per year. This Renew Collaborative is going to allow us to go upstream. Right now, it's always been hard to convince policymakers and public funders that prevention is the right thing to do because they always say it's hard to prove. Would somebody really end up um, not being evicted or not end up at the shelter? Well, what Matt Pritchard and Homestar and our partners have showed is, is that um, it works and we need to invest in it. And so for property owners and housing authorities, you should know that for Father Bills in Mainspring, 96% of all the at-risk households that we've assisted in our prevention programs remain housed with our services. We have the staff expertise to address the immediate eviction issues, and we provide crisis case management services 
to ensure that all these tendencies get stabilized for the long term. So at the end of the day, we are just so honored to be a part of this. Um, as you can see in the city of Brockton and in the South Shore, we have the political will from our mayors to our delegation um, and again to all of our private funders today. Thank you to funders at Homestart for including us. We're going to add this to our toolbox. We're going to add this to helping the families and individuals in this region. And so thank you, Robert, and the mayor again for your continued support. And our team is ready to go. Thank you. Thank you, John. The one thing I, I when they asked me to be the MC for this, I, I really didn't know about the program. But that's not unlike a lot of us folks who are down here in Brockton or at the South Shore that do, do not get the attention that the city of Brock, Boston gets. And so I want to thank the United Way, all our partners. Uh, I'm going to introduce Mark in a moment, but all our partners to, to thank you for guys coming down here. Because, for instance, I used to work in the city of Boston. I worked for um, Dorchester Bay Economic Development Corporation. And there was a lot of resources, and we worked very closely with the city of Boston. But when I came to Brockton, it kind of the line was stopped, and no one came past Quincy. They didn't know what they were doing in Brockton. And I'm proud to say now, in the great city of Brockton, we now have resources that are coming past 24, down 24, to the city of Brockton, and helping us with some of these resources that are, that are desperately needed in this city. Uh, at this point in time, I'd like to introduce Matt Pritchard, President and Executive Director of Homestart. I just met Matt today. Uh, Matt is a President and an Executive Director of Homestart. Matt has an impact, a impactful track record of launching and growing nonprofit ventures and advocating for at-risk populations. Previously, Matt launched and led a portfolio of social enterprises at, at Boston's homeless shelter. I always get Boston, Brockton. It's the great city of Brockton, and then it's just Boston. <laughs> um, has served as the family foundation addressing generations poverty and, have, and most recently, the chief operating officer at one of Massachusetts' largest family shelters and residential substance abuse uh, treatment providers. He is also involved in foster care advocacy, as well as a various community building activities. Matt, I'd like to welcome you to the great city of Brockton. I have a couple of questions for you as well. Um, bringing this to Brockton, this program, the new collaborative to Brockton, we want to understand how the model works, but first, please share with us uh, how you were introduced to the eviction crisis, uh, what got you and Homestart doing this work, and can you tell us how the model actually works, Matt? Excellent. Hi. Um, so the first question was how I got involved in yes. the work, Robert. So um, about 20 years ago, I moved into the bunks of a homeless shelter in Boston. I had accepted a job at the shelter and moved into the bunks for a year so that I could better understand the challenges associated with homelessness. And one of my bunk mates was uh, a young man named Jason who was a single dad and who because of an unexpected crisis of absolutely no fault of his own was evicted with his five-year-old little boy. And um, they lived in his car for a couple of months until one afternoon he went to pick his son up from school and he was met um, at the school by the principal and his son's teacher and a police officer and he lost custody of his son on the front steps of the school. Um, and, and what I noticed is that the longer I, I spent time in the shelter was that Jason's story was not unique. It was part of a larger pattern that was happening in Boston mm -hmm. um, and, a, and a larger pattern happening in the region. And since then I've learned that this is, the eviction crisis is happening all across the country. And so, um, and so, um, you know, Jason worked um, hard for six months to get uh, save money for first, last, and security, um, and regained his housing. And after another six months or so, regained custody of his son. But his trauma and the trauma of thousands of other families um, is absolutely unnecessary. And um, curiously, what we learned through um, the work, our eviction prevention work at Homestart, was that. 
the, the preventing an eviction episode is very, 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 very simple. The model is not complicated. So the average family in Boston being evicted for non-payment has a rental debt of about $1,800. And so we meet a family in court, um, we'll make a small payment towards the property owner to stop the eviction and buy some time, and we'll work with the family for 12 months while they repay the balance of that debt and while we create a blueprint with them to mitigate against the risk of eviction happening again. And uh, 12 months after our intervention, 97%, much like the numbers that John has seen of our families have sustained their housing in four years, 48 months after the intervention, only 5% of our 2,500 families or so whose evictions we prevented have experienced eviction by non-payment. The program works. Um, but as, as interestingly as the, the, just the positive outcome, the Boston Housing Authority opened uh, their books and showed us that it was costing them over $10,000 to evict a family because of the turnover of the apartment, the legal fees, constable fees, storage fees, um, vacancy, and that didn't even include the unpaid debt, but it was costing the Renew Collaborative a substantially smaller amount of money to prevent the eviction from happening in the first place. And so we worked with the Boston Housing Authority for about a year to craft a per intervention reimbursement rate contract. And so now the Housing Authority is paying Homestart to prevent evictions from happening because they could show us that last year alone this program sir, um, saved the Boston Housing Authority over a million dollars last year alone. Mm -hmm. And so um, and so that's kind of a high level um, how the program works. But you know, more specifically, you know, having the, the, the reimbursement rate contract um, work is creating an economically viable way for us to scale the program and sustain it permanently. And without partners like Father Bills, who are the most reputable um, social service organization on the South Shore delivering those services, it would not be possible. And, and you know, Mark referenced this, and you referenced this, and Mayor Carpenter, you referenced this, about us working together. This is, this is something that property owners have never done before. There was never an alternative to evicting a family uh, because you can't forgive rental debt or you'd go out of business, period. And so there's a huge amount of education necessary in order to introduce this intervention to property owners so they understand their commercial return, how it's aligned with that, and also how it improves their communities. And I know Lisa will represent that in just a moment, representing Trinity Management. But this is why in a venue like this, for everyone in the room, like whether or not, whether you work at a housing authority or you're a city councilor, this is a movement that will require a lot of people to help us move the needle to make this happen. And so. We are very grateful to be in the great city of Brockton to, uh, and, and for your partnership in this and with Father Bills and, and Combined Jewish Philanthropies and Bank of America and the United Way. It is, it, this is, a, this is a, a, a village um, supporting people and we're refusing to look away. So thank you. Matt, thank you so much. Fantastic. Um, at this point in time, I'd like to introduce Lisa, Lisa Morshante. Morshante? Morshanti. So thank close. you. So close. <laughs> I met Lisa this morning as well. Um, Lisa works for Trinity Financial, and they have a, a little bit of a history here in Brockton. Um, they've done our most recent development. We're working with them also on a garage. Uh, well, they're the abutters. We're doing the garage now, Mayor, but they're the abutters and we've been working closely with uh, Trinity Management. Now, Lisa is the Vice President of Policy and Strategic Engagement at Trinity Management Company. It's very interesting. I didn't know Trinity had a Policy and st Strategic Engagement Division. Employed in social service field for the past decade, Lisa is a licensed independent cl clinician social worker who has extensive experience working with survivors of sexual and interpersonal violence and with individuals with chronic psychiatric conditions and development delays. She has developed initiatives, educational trainings, programs to address tenant-related issues, 
organize communities around self-identified -ident issues, and guided individuals and families toward better physical, emotional, and mental health. At this point in time, I'd like to introduce Lisa, and Lisa, I have a couple of questions for you as well. Um, if you could tell us from your perspective why management companies in particular would commit to this type of partnership, uh, what's in it for you? What's the return on investment? I think what Mark is come, was saying here is that there is an economic return on investment here. And Lisa, if you could speak to that for us, we really would appreciate that, all right? Excellent. Thank you everybody for coming out today on this very momentous occasion. It is a great honor to be here with the mayor as well as our elected officials and especially with all of you who see this as such a critical time in the work that we do collectively. I think one of the things that is so incredibly critical is that this work cannot be done in a vacuum. It really requires all of us to step up in a different way. And I had the honor to start working with Matt on this particular collaborative several, I wanna say it was like a year and a half ago, when we really started to have some serious conversations around how can private entities really work with this new concept in figuring out ways to preserve housing. And at Trinity Management, we have an utmost commitment to housing affordability, and most importantly, we have a commitment to create homes for families and individuals. We are not in the business of eviction. We're actually in the business of trying to work with families and households and our community partners in figuring out how can we preserve housing. And so this opportunity to work with the Renew Collaborative is something that has really aligns with the mission of our company and also aligns with what it is that we're seeing in the housing field. Now, for those of you who are part of private management companies, you know that we are in a, a little bit of a tug of war, or tug of peace, as a couple of my colleagues in Boston say. And part of that tug of peace is the fact that we absolutely want to preserve housing for our households, and we have a business to run, right? And so how do we, how do we manage this? And when we started talking about the Renew Collaborative, it was this very innovative model of thinking to help us think outside of the box, to help us really establish a certain partnership with Homestart as well as other partners that have been part of this effort to try to figure out how can we work with our households prior to there being a risk of homelessness. And at the end of the day, this has actually been one of the partnerships that I have truly treasured, and we've partnered with many other organizations. We're actually piloting the Renewed Collaborative at one of our sites in Mattapan. And it's been such an honor and a pleasure to work with the team, as well as our households there that were at risk for homelessness due to uh, non-payment of rent issues. The issue is way beyond the folks in this room. That is just the reality. This is an issue that really comes from the tippity top of this country to the folks that are doing the work directly with our households. The reality is the housing crisis is a crisis, it is a crisis that we are all contending with. And how can we as private management companies be part of the actual solution of how to address the housing crisis, how to reduce the and, and eventually prevent homelessness within our communities. We have such a critical role in that. And for us at Trinity Management, we see this as truly a moral issue. It's an issue of seeing, and someone mentioned, I believe it was the rabbi earlier, seeing this, seeing the humanity in the households that we work with. And in order for us to have empathy and compassion and to understand what it is like or to even just imagine what it's like to make the tough choice of putting dinner on the table versus keeping a roof over your head, that's a decision that no one should ever have to make. And if we can be part in any way, shape, or form of working with families, working with agencies to try to prevent that decision from being the thing that creates homelessness for the households that we work with, then sign us up because we're on board. 
we are a company that truly, truly believes in being on the cutting edge of some of these innovative ways of thinking when it comes to this issue. And I, you know, I think one of the things that Matt and I have talked about throughout the course of our conversations is that it really does come down to doing the right thing, stepping up in the right ways, not being part of the problem, being part of the solution. And maybe over time, we will continue to fine tune and work through and figure out a bigger and better way out of this issue that many of us are facing and seeing day in and day out. So thank you to everyone here. So at this point in time, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Durkin from the United Way. Um, just two points I think I wanted everyone to take away from, from just the discussion. Um, one, or actually three points. The first one is we're dealing with the most vulnerable population in this country. The second piece is, is that this is a prevention program. This is to keep people in their units. And then it's an economic issue. It's the return on investment, as I think it was uh, Matt who pointed out. The Housing Authority, Boston Housing Authority, last year saved a million dollars. I kind of understand what it is to turn over a unit and ha ha go through an eviction process. I think every Wednesday or every other Wednesday, I'm down at housing court for other issues, not evictions, but other issues. And you can see the line of people that are going through this process. And I think as a, as, as a unit owner or a property owner, you don't want to be in housing court. That's the last thing. It's time, it's money. So the return on investment in this program is something that even the basic person understands, business person understands. So I think those are the three takeaways. At this time, Mr. Durkin, I'm going to turn it over to you. Excellent. Fantastic. We're going to wrap up. Okay. It's hot. I get a nice breeze this way, but I don't think it's making it all the way to the back of the room. So you don't want me to share the hot air I saved up so far today? <laughs> I got to tell you, coming up to speak after, uh, after the crew that we had before, I kind of feel like the guy who would have batted cleanup at Fenway Park after, you know, Pesky, Williams, Rice, Yastrzemski, Bogarts, and all those have come up and had great home runs. Mr. Mayor, you got to be thankful that uh, in the great city of Boston, your leadership and others, are not just talking around this issue, but you're talking directly to this issue. I can tell you, I've stood in a lot of city halls and talked to a lot of people throughout Eastern Massachusetts, and the grasp that you and your colleagues have on this is powerful, and I think that's gonna indicate good things are gonna get done. You know, as we, as we talked earlier, and the folks that preceded me, uh, Rabbi Baker, John, Matt, Lisa, and others, um, and certainly Bank of America, you get the sense that we really do have something here that can work. It works because, as Mark said, we've got an opportunity and an obligation to come together to do something for folks that just aren't able to do it on their own. And I take one small bit of exception to what Lisa said earlier about this problem is bigger than us. At, at a big level, it is. But I think often if you watch the news in the afternoon or the evening and you see programs and you get roiled up about, oh my God, what are we gonna do about that? And then oftentimes you go to sleep and you get up in the next day and you go to work and you know, the, the issue is reported. This is a winnable battle here. You know, Matt, Matt talked earlier, or John did about, you know, the, the cost it takes an organization like Homestart or, or Father Bills and Mainstream, $40,000 a year to take care of a family. The numbers as I understand them with this renew model is, it takes about $750 and a lot of good work on the part of Homestart and its partners to make sure the family stays intact. I'm not real good at math, but I know for sure the difference there is a huge savings for cities, for housing authorities, for property managers, and it's a huge savings and a grace for the families that otherwise would be having their lives torn asunder. So we've got a great program today, and the challenge for you and I is not to walk out of here and say, boy, that was a really great program we had today. The challenge and the opportunity and the obligation for us is to do something about it. I'd, I'd also like to point out, I think Dennis Carman is still here, my, my colleague with the United Way in, in uh, Greater Plymouth County, a longtime uh, uh, champion and warrior in making sure families are able to have people like you and others who can do something about it. Matt Pritchard said earlier, what we got to do is open the door and get more people to understand this issue. So here's the challenge I think we all would want to put in front of you. You've heard the story today. Talk is good, action is better. 
what we need to do is let's talk to our, our housing authorities throughout southeastern Massachusetts and elsewhere. Let's talk to our friends, let's talk to our congregations, uh, our city councils, whomever it is, to talk about we can do something around this issue of uh, eviction. We can stop it right now for families. The second thing I would remind you, it's $750 can make a huge change in a family's life. So you're meeting somebody over the next week and a half. You're going to a cookout, you're doing whatever you're gonna do. Get together with your friends, figure out how we can raise some of those $750. There's people who are gonna be able to help you here. We'll have a little time to talk after this. In the final analysis, what I think we're about is the three word admonition that goes on in the subways in London. Anybody been to London and know what they say on the subway systems? Come on, somebody knows this. Mind the gap, thanks. I think that's really what we're doing here. You know, there's individuals and families that just need a little bit of help once in a while to get across a gap that seems too big in their life. And there's other folks because of dumb luck, bad choices, God's grace, things we don't understand, have a huge gap that they've got to cover every day. Well, with the Renew Collaborative, with the partnership we've got here, partnering with United Way, City of Brockton, and others, what we've got a chance to do is to help people who can't get there on their own to mind the gap. Have a great day. Remember what we're talking about here, and let's get it going. Thank you.